earlier today, as I was like thinking or just even praying through all this, I literally had a picture um, and I never, ever looked at it this way, uh, but of the story of the prodigal son. And, um, and when he, when it says like, he gets to the point where he comes to the end of himself and he's like, man, like I, I would have it, I have it better. Like while I'm out here, like I'd have it better if I just went back to my father's house. Um, even if I was treated like, like one of the servants there, um, I'd be, I'd be much better off than, than the life that I've been living out here. Like, like I have, I have nothing like left out here. I thought I had everything I need, but I have nothing. And, and it says that he came, you know, coming home, he came running home and, and it says the father saw him from afar off and got up and started running. And I just had this picture of like, uh, uh, the Lord wants to meet us in the middle. Um, and I'm literally like preaching to myself right now, but um, that he wants to meet us in the middle, that he is not waiting for us to, uh, he does not need for us to have it all together. He does not need um, our perfect tailored plans. He does not um, need our, our excellence if it is just a mask for perfectionism. Um, and procrastination. Um, um, he wants us to have an excellent spirit, but an excellent spirit is really just a heart that fully just wants to yield and and please him and give him their all. Um, not necessarily in things looking um, perfect and polished and pretty. That is not uh, what he is after. He just wants our yes. Um, and so I just I, I feel like that story is, though I never saw it that way, it's a picture, I think, for many of us, um, or really even all of us, regardless of whether we, you know, know, definitely know the next step or if we're still trying to figure it out. Um, I just felt like he kept saying, like, you will know as you go. Um, yeah, like, you will know as you go. Like, I... I reveal things along the way. This is a walk with me. I said, follow me, not sit down and hear the entire like game plan and strategy and, and um, of how your entire life is supposed to pan out. And then you get up and make a move. No, like I, I am saying I will be with you in the middle, like, but now's the time to make a move. Um, I, I believe that he wants to, um, come and, and breathe upon our movement. Um, I believe he wants to bring like the provision with our movement, the, the, um, the community with our movement, with our pursuit, right? So just as much as the son got up from where he was. So of course he could have sat there and be like, man, like I really do. He could have had the idea. Like I really do have it much better if, um, you know, if I were to just go back to my father's house and then if he would have just sat there, he would have sat there in the place of literally like the pig's mud um, and the muck and the mire and and in this debilitating state. And in that place, he probably had he chose to stay there, he would have died because um, he had literally nothing left. He was eating out of a pig trough like and so um, but even in his uncertainty, even in his, um, just, yeah, his, his uncertainty about, you know, how his father was going to react to, you know, his wayward son's return. Um, he got up and he made a move and it's when he made that move that then the father, and I almost imagine it kind of like, you know, a Southern porch, uh, like the father just sitting, waiting, sitting out there in expectation, looking out upon the road, waiting for his son to come running, um, to to come home, and and he sees him from afar off and gets up and takes off running after him, and the father meets him in the middle. The father goes. He doesn't wait. He doesn't sit there smug or angry and waiting for for the son to come and approach him. He takes the initiative. He sees the movement of the sun and he advances toward him. And I just feel like that is the, 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 the 
the time, the season, the hour that we are in, that God wants to um, move upon our movement. The word says, draw close to me and I'll draw close to you. Like, like, <laughs> like, like Luda, like when I move, you move just like, like that same, like it's a dance. It's a tango. It's, it's us moving in sync together. Um, it's not all on us doing all the work. Um, it's, it's a, it's a partnership. And so I just, um, I just believe that, that that's what's on the Lord's heart. He wants to meet us in the middle and the father wants to come uh, running and partner with us um, for the plans, um, for his plans to be accomplished. And so um, I don't know what that move looks like for you. I don't know if it means um, leaving that relationship, or I don't know if it means leaving that friend group or finding friends um, or, uh, you know, pursuing small groups at church or something like that, or, or leaning in even to this community and, and, joining the newsletter and, and speaking up and saying, Hey, like, I, this is what I need, or I need prayer. Or, I need community. Or I need like, like, like making a move, starting the ministry, starting the business, get you, the, whatever the, and I'm not saying these are like grand, it doesn't have to be these grand scheme things, whatever, whatever the Lord has spoken to you, um, whether to anybody else, it may seem smaller. To anybody else, it may seem huge. It doesn't, that doesn't matter. Whatever he's told you to do, that is what you are required to be obedient to. Um, and whatever he has told you to do, he is giving you grace for it to come running after him um, or to come to pursue him. And he will meet you in the middle. I will never forget where we went, um, my husband and I, when we were in a place, uh, this was 2019 summer of 2019. And we were like, feeling like the Lord was like putting it on our hearts to move to Atlanta. And so we from Southern California, born and raised, never, you know, lived pretty much like anywhere out of state. So we were both kind of like, okay, if this is God, then we're just gonna, I don't like, we're gonna test it and see. Right. And so um, so we made a move. So we happened to go to church, um, uh, this particular day and I was like, let's go up and get prayer. And so we went to the front, um, this super sweet, uh, Filipina girl, um, uh, saw us and, you know, she was like, what's your names? And, and then she just got quiet and I'm like, and I just start, I, I spilled on her and I told her like what, you know, we were asking for prayer for and she just, I don't know if you've ever had a moment like that, but she was just like, and I'm like standing there, like, she was like cold silent for like a minute. And I'm like, did she hear us or like what? And so she, then she says, Hey, I feel like the Lord is saying, if you take, she's like, I feel like the Lord is saying, if you take a step of faith, the provision will follow. And that was like all the, confirmation I needed. Yet, even within all that, it wasn't even like a definite like, yes, if that makes sense. So I know sometimes we can ask like, God, like, should I do this or should I do that? And I think sometimes there are clear like, yes, no, you know, but I think there are also sometimes moments where God gives us an opportunity um, to make the move. God gives us the opportunity to exercise our faith. And sometimes um, he's not going to explicitly like give a uh, super clear direction because he wants to see the move we're going to make. He wants to see what we're going to do with our faith, how we're going to like just, yeah, what step we're going to take. And, but regardless, whether, whether he explicitly gives the instruction or whether he kind of like sits back a little bit to see if we're going to make the move. Um, every single time uh, he will meet us in the middle. He will meet us right where we're at. Literally, we she said those words like, you know, if you take the step of faith, the provision will follow. So we were like, OK, so we literally took that as our green light. Like and we just so happened our lease for our apartment was getting ready to be up. And we were like, you know what? Like we're not going to renew it. 
like we we think this is what God is saying. Just so happened that there were some positions in Atlanta um, at my husband's job um, at the the location down uh, down there or here because that's where I'm at now. Um, but uh, and he was like, I'm just gonna apply. And it's like even those times, like I remember friends saying to me before, kind of like apply as a prayer and. And uh, that's what he did. Like we literally applied as a prayer, like, like, Lord, if this is you, if this is what you want, then we know you're going to breathe on it. Like we know your favor is going to meet us there. We know that you're going to meet us right here in the middle. And um, I kid you not, he, my husband started getting, you know, he got offers. He got two offers to even choose from Well, he got to pick what, and it was just like, what, um, even for us, um, with with uh, we put in the notice for our apartment, telling them that we weren't going to renew the lease when we didn't even know the security of him having a job or not. Like like granted that was that was crazy, and there was we got some pushback on that, like from family, like no, that's and even some who even said like that's not how God works, that's not how God speaks, like that's not what God does. And um, but we were like. We're just going to trust it. And the doors started to fling open. So we were like, okay, like this is, and then the doors started closing here, you know? Um, And so, and so we went, mind you, and that's maybe another story time for another day. We ended up, COVID hit, that was 2020. We ended up moving back to California. Um, The Lord didn't necessarily tell us to do that. We realized that after how hard the year was the year and a half was I remember it to the T um because it was hard. Um and uh but even and we just moved back to Atlanta because we felt like the Lord was like I didn't tell y'all to go like I didn't tell y'all to leave in the first place. Um so we were like okay if we feel like this is again this is what he's saying again so we're gonna go for it same thing. Like, okay, Lord, you said this last time, if we take a step of faith, the provision will follow. So we're going to, we're going to go for it. And I kid you not yet again, we did yet this time, my prayer specifically was from Isaiah 22, 22, which says uh, that God has given the keys. Ooh, let me quote it correctly. I think God has given the keys to the house of David um, given the keys of the kingdom to the house of David. And uh, he will be able to open doors no man can shut and close doors no man can open, right? So I was specifically praying that verse, asking God um, that because, you know, I, we're his kids, because I belong to him, I am actually demanding or commanding that the doors that are meant for, to open for us open and that the doors that are meant to close shut. And I kid you not, I kept praying that and kept praying that and kept praying that. And literally like, I, it almost felt like, I want to say like the week that I started like praying that and declaring that and like leaning into that doors started flinging open, but more importantly, doors were closing closing like hey yeah like my husband's saying in ends up applying for the job here in Atlanta um door flings wide open he has to tell his boss um you know because his boss has to approve the transfer and his boss is like oh my gosh like really you're transferring great because I was gonna fire you this summer anyway and we were like mind you he's been at this job for like eight years faithful never gotten in you know any kind of like trouble so that's a whole nother story, but just, it just turned a light on and almost, even though he was doing it out of spite, um, and, and from, uh, just, a just, a not good heart. Um, it actually turned the light on and was confirmation for us. Like, Oh, like we're actually moving. <laughs> we're, we're actually moving in the right direction. Um, because this is an answer prayer. So, so even at that, like God's yeses and God's no's um, are both good. Um, if we really have our hands open, like with, with the plans that he has for us, um, or with our plans, I should say, like if, if, uh, if our plans are an idol, then it's hard for us 
to see his no's or his yeses to certain things as good for us. But if our if our hands are open, even if we really, really even want the thing or or if even if he promised it, um, I and I would repeatedly say that to my husband, like I'm holding this loosely. And he'd be like, no, nah, like grip that thing, put it in a chokehold. And I'm like, no, like I am saying I'm holding it loosely because I I don't not that I don't have faith for it or don't want to. Um, yeah, or don't don't want to like attach my faith for it or get my hopes up. I'm not saying that, um, but more so I'm saying I don't want to uh, make my heart posture, my focus so much about getting the thing that I like lose sight of like the God that I'm that I get to gain, the God that I already have, um, and and Him being enough, right? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, and so yeah, so I just I just I, I guess I just maybe we could just pray into that. I just feel like. Um, for the move that God is telling you to make, I don't even want to say asking you the move that God is inviting you into the move that he is telling you to make. Um, I pray just in the name of Jesus, God, um, Isaiah 22, let me actually find it. Isaiah 22, 22. And if you've been seeing two, two, two everywhere, like me, this is probably going to be like, uh, because that's how it was for me. I was like, that's what this freaking means. Um, Isaiah 22, 22. Bop, 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 bop. There he is. Um, so Lord, I just declare, Father, over every myself, every single person watching, Father, according to your word in Isaiah 22, 22, that you will place on their shoulders the key of the house of David. Lord, we know Jesus came from the bloodline of David. You said that he has all the keys um, of the kingdom. He holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He holds the keys of blessing, of honor, of glory, of righteousness righteousness, Lord God. And so, Lord, we thank you that because we belong to him, those keys are ours, that everything that, that you entrusted to Jesus, everything you gave Jesus, you share it. He freely gives it and freely shares it with us. And so right now we command in the name of Jesus that every door that is meant to open we command it to open right now in Jesus' name. In the spirit, we ask God that every door of opportunity, every door, every window um, um, of, of opportunity, every every door and window of favor, every door and window of, of financial provision, every door and window of, of, of uh, mental clarity and peace of mind, every door and window of strategy and and um, uh, uh, intentional like plans and and steps that you that you have for us, every connection that we need, Father God, every um, community that we need to be a part of, every home that we need, every every place, um, every resource, Father God, everything that we need to fulfill the assignments that you have placed upon our lives, the plans that that you have created before the foundations of the world, the the word that you have spoken concerning our lives that you um, are obsessively looking to fulfill. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would fling wide open those doors, that you would even unleash. We just command even your angels, God, um, your warring angels, Lord, to defeat the enemies of delay. We just bind the spirit of delay in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of uh, denial, Lord God, um, and, and distraction, Father, anything that would try to come in the way um, um, of us uh, receiving your resources and everything that we need uh, to accomplish the things that you have called us to, Lord God. And we command in the name of Jesus, Lord, that no one else, Lord, shall be able to shut those doors. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would even um, remove just the pressure that we've even put upon ourselves to think that uh, <clears throat> that even maybe our mistakes uh, can cause us to um, miss out on you. When we are abiding in you, when we are following you, when we are just going and trusting uh, what, what we believe you're saying, even if it's not the right thing, 
you are so good that you will always lead us to where we need to be. So I just pray that you would just remove any fear of disappointing you, God. You are not an angry God. There is not fire in your eyes against us. Every bit of anger that you had, every bit of wrath that you wanted to give, every every bit of um, disappointment, Lord God, you laid that all on Jesus on the cross. And now we, when we trust in him fully, we are in your covenant of peace. We will never know what it's like to not be loved. We will never know what it's like to experience your wrath. We will never know what it's like to experience your judgment, God, when we are abiding in Jesus. So Lord, I just pray, God, anybody, Lord, who has felt this just like looming feeling like you are angry with them, like you are disappointed with them, like you are 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 have a gavel in your hand, like you are just looking and waiting for them to fail. You're waiting to just strike them down. I just rebuke those lies in the name of Jesus. And I pray in the name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord would be your strength, that you would recognize that you are God's beloved in whom he is well pleased even if you haven't done all the things. His pleasure over you is simply because of what Jesus has done. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. Those are the lenses that he sees you through. Not anything that you can offer, not anything that you can give, not your best days and not your worst, not your achievements and your accomplishments and your successes or you know your failures and, and the things that you just completely screwed up in. None of those things impress or disappoint him. He looks at you through the eyes of Jesus, through the gaze of Jesus. And the pleasure he has over Jesus is the pleasure he has over you. He likes you. He delights in you. You excite him. He, he is thrilled to, to see you. Uh, he is thrilled to talk to you. He is thrilled to hear from you. He, he, is, he is excited. He is not a tyrant. He is not angry. So whatever... Whatever, whatever perception you have of him, that whatever picture painted that you have of him in your mind that does not line up with a joyful, happy father, get, it is a lie. It is a lie. It is a lie. And you cannot keep partnering with it any longer because it will literally only keep you in this place of defeat and stuckness. So Lord, I just pray that you would help us, Lord, to, to get our eyes off of just these even false images of you. And I pray that you would help us to get our eyes um, on the correct uh, image of your joy and your smile over us. Um, so Lord, yeah, I just ask that you would open every single door that needs to be open and shut. Um, and no one will be able to shut it, not even us. We won't even be able to get in our own way. That's how good you are. I just pray that, that yeah, there will be nothing, Lord, that, that even if we stumble and fall and then get back up, Lord, that you would, you would lead us exactly to where we need to be as long as we're abiding in you. That's how good you are. Um, and Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that every single door that does not need to be open, every relationship, um, every mindset, every stronghold, um, every habit, um, every community group that we may be part of, um, any job, um, anything we do for money, uh, it just anything, Lord God, that we have opened and availed, uh, and availed ourselves to that um, separates us from you, that, that allows um, distraction and, and free access uh, for the enemy to have like legal and free access and just to be able to come and go in our lives as we please, as he pleases. I, I command in the name of Jesus that every single one of those doors, we evict the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Every distraction, we command you to leave in Jesus' name. You are not welcome here. Every bit of shame, every bit of fear, every bit of pride and arrogance, we bind you in Jesus' name. Every um, um, procrastinating spirit, every uh, a spirit of doubt and unbelief that, that has entered in, we bind you or we command you to go in Jesus name. You are not welcome here. Every unclean spirit, every unclean spirit, we bind you in Jesus name and we say, get out in Jesus name. And Lord, we loose, Lord God, 
we loose, Lord God, the Holy Spirit for your spirit to fill every place, to occupy every place of our soul, of our mind, of our heart, Lord God, um, that that the enemy thought he could he could camp in, Lord God. And we seal and shut by the keys, Lord God, of Jesus, the keys of David, Lord God. We seal and shut these key, these doors in the name of Jesus and lock them with the key in Jesus' name. And I just pray that you are encouraged. I pray that even as you read this um, in Isaiah 22, 22, I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David, though that is talking about the Messiah, though that is talking about Jesus. I also just want you to also receive that for yourself, that there are keys, that there are doors, that there are unique um, doors that that literally the Lord has assigned to your house, like you, like your family, like your bloodline, like there are things that me, like as, as the Lindo family that we are literally like anointed and ordained for, like maybe you have been the one that has been anointed for, for wealth. Maybe your family is the one that has been anointed for entrepreneurship. Maybe, maybe the keys of, of influence, right? Maybe, maybe uh, fame or certain things aren't, doors that might open up for anybody else. And not to say that, um, yeah, that that is like something that we strive after, but like having, uh, having influence that really makes an impact that really, really creates a ripple effect of positive change. Like maybe that is the key that only you carry. Um, and so I want you to have the audacity to believe that there are access points, um, that are all that only you can access like do not defer to anybody else like maybe you it's you the key to to speaking the key to preaching the key to teaching the key to to whatever the thing is right like that key is is specifically like for you and i feel fully like god is giving out like He's dishing out keys in this time, and this is the time to open it up and and walk through it. This is not the time to be timid about about any of that. Like this is the time to take our keys, take our authority, and to use it and to pray against anything that's getting in the way of the doors flinging open, and and to to pray that um, uh, God would open help to open up the doors. But part of this is making the move. It is no use. And even, even in that, right. In this whole time of, of us talking about giving God our yes and meeting him in the middle and making a move and all these different things. What is the point of having a key? If you never use it, what is the point of having a key to a car? If you never put it in the ignition and pull off and drive the thing, what is, and I'm, I'm, it's crazy that I'm even saying this now because I have been the person that has had the entire ring of keys and has sat here for forever, but those days are over. Okay. So, you know, so, so get your key. You actually, you have the keys already. Jesus already gave them to you. Maybe you just didn't realize that you actually have them. You're not helpless out here. You're not an orphan out here, right? You're not, you're not stuck. You are not. There is always a move to make. There is always a move to make. You are not stuck. Use your key. Use your key. Ask God, what is it? What is in my hand? What do I have? Use your key. Okay. So, so yeah, so that, that was the picture that I got earlier. And um, I kind of just briefly want to like, sing the little song that I felt like came because I felt like maybe, I don't know, like there's like something on that. And so it just, it was just was this phrase of like, meet me in the middle, meet me in the middle. Um, so I don't, yeah, you could just kind of follow along, sing along, you know, as you can go. We'll just repeat it a couple of times because I really wanted to like sink down into our hearts that he wants and will meet us in the middle, but we have to make a move and just making a move even in fear or even really not fear, but even a step of faith with kind of like our uncertainty or whatever uh, is still faith, even though the yes might feel weak. So, um, so Lord, we just thank you. 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 Thank you that you're going to meet us in the middle. It goes like this. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle. 
Meet me in the middle of my weakness. Meet me in the middle of my storm. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle of my weakness. Meet me in the middle of the storm. Meet me in the middle. He's gonna meet me in the middle. He's gonna meet me in the middle of my weakness. He'll meet me in the middle of my storm. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle of my weakness. Meet me in the middle of my storm. Meet me in the middle last time. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle of my weakness. Meet me in the middle of my storm. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle. Meet me in the middle of my weakness. Meet me in the middle of the storm. Oh, Lord, I thank you that that is where your peace is in the middle. That is where your strength is in the middle. Your word says that your uh, your grace is enough for us. Your grace is sufficient for us. That even in our weakness, that is where your power and your strength is actually made perfect. So Lord, I pray that you would bring us to the place of boasting in our weakness, of getting comfortable with being needy. Father, that we would not shame ourselves any longer for being needy, for being weak, for being hungry, for being thirsty, for for not having it all together because that is the actual place where you want to meet us. But this world and even our flesh love to make us think that we need to be strong all the time, that we need to have everything all the have everything together all the time, that we need to have all of our resources and all of the things before we start, that we need to be in the perfect place at the perfect time, that we need to have all of the money, all of the things um, first before we can do anything. And it's such a huge lie if we we don't we don't have all of those things. We don't have all of those things. Um, and, and those things will keep us in that feeling of stuckness, um, in that place of being paralyzed. But Lord, when we choose to humble ourselves, to allow ourselves to be just human, and when we let ourselves uh, be human and let you be God, let you do the supernatural things, let you, we, we give you our humanity, right? We give you our weakness and you come and, and embody that and breathe upon that. And, and, uh, uh, and you meet us there with your godness. I don't even know if that's a word, right? But that, that's, that's the epitome of who Jesus is, fully God and fully man. We are fully, when we are fully human, which means we allow ourselves to be weak and not having it all together and not knowing everything and, and having limitations, right? Um, but, but you in, come into that space, not shaming us, but you, you dwell with us in it. And then you make the supernatural and miraculous happen and you defy the odds. So Lord, that is the place where we will see miracle signs and wonders. 